Sayal was interested in the relationship between stress, chronic stress, and health. Through his initial experiments with rats who were exposed to a series of stressors such as extreme temperature variations, tail pulling, etc. And then later on looking at significant stressors to humans such as death of a spouse, job loss, etc. And what he observed that the body would respond to a stressor with a predictable biological pattern to maintain the body's balance or stability. But there's a limited supply of adaptive energy to deal with stress. Through his research he came up with the general adaptation syndrome, which can be defined as the total mobilisation of an organism's resources and defence mechanisms to meet situations of severe stress. The GIS has three stages, alarm, resistance and exhaustion. An alarm we can split into shock and counter shock. So when we first become aware of the stressor, we go into shock. The body acts as if it's injured. For instance, our body temperature is briefly lowered, blood pressure decreases, and importantly, our level of resistance is lowered. That is, we're not dealing with the stressor. When we start dealing with the stressor, we've moved into counter shock. The body becomes aroused, more alert. The sympathetic nervous system has been activated. Stress hormones are released into the bloodstream. Heart rate increases, respiratory system accelerates, the muscles are provided with more energy, etc. And importantly, our resistance is increasing. It's above the normal level. We're dealing with a stressor. Failure to successfully deal with a stressor during counter shock results in us moving into the resistance stage where our arousal remains high, stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol are released in the bloodstream, which in the short term is a good thing because it energizes the body, it repairs damages, it makes us more alert and enabled to maintain a high level of performance, but it does come at a cost. So the cost of maintaining a high level of resistance will be a weakened immune system. Thus, we become eventually more vulnerable to disease. And we might start developing symptoms such as a runny nose, sore throat, etc. Failure to successfully deal with a stressor during resistance results in a depleted defense mechanism. Thus, our resistance is lower. We're vulnerable to a variety of mental disorders such as depression, psychosomatic illnesses, psycho meaning mind, soma meaning body, so the mind has caused the body to become ill. That is, we can develop physiological disorders such as hypertension, ulcers, sleep disorders such as insomnia, etc. So in summary, resistance is high during counter shock during alarm and the resistance stage. It's lower than normal during shock and exhaustion. The fight flight response is first activated during counter shock, during alarm. Cortisol, a stress hormone, is released during resistance. We might develop a symptom such as a sore throat during resistance, but the resistance will be high. We'll develop illness, mental disorder, hypertension, etc during exhaustion. The strength of the GAS model, well the model examines the relationship between psychological stressors and a physiological health. A weakness doesn't factor cognitive appraisal such as the transactional model which we'll look at in the future.